The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's Moore as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening. This is Lowe's Moore and welcome back to The Blueprint. I, I mean, I don't know whether you guys, man, it was a little shaky when we when we started uh, with the uh, spring a few weeks ago and man, the weather was like we were still in winter, but man, this weekend was nice, except for just, you know, just a few minutes ago when it started thundering and we had this loud boom and, and everybody jumped in the house and I was like, Whoa, what was that? But, uh, it, it's been nice, uh, to be able to get outside, to walk around, um, to enjoy family. It's just been a powerful, powerful experience, man. I'm looking for more of these days, more of these days every day. I'm, I'm excited. And and so again, I want to welcome you and thank you for your support of the Blueprint for all these months uh, that we've been together. I'm excited. And, you know, I was kind of doing a little evaluation because it's been so long. I think this may be my 50th uh, episode uh, of, of the blueprint podcast, uh, since I started. And I was thinking about like when I, we went into the pandemic, I didn't know what I was going to do. And then all of a sudden somebody mentioned about a podcast and, you know, and, and, and doing something. The next thing you know, we were up and running and he gave me some questions. He said like, Oh, well, what would you do? What would be the name? And I would say, oh, I don't know. And then I started thinking, and of course, uh, Pauletta Washington, uh, Denzel's wife, uh, when I wrote my book from the Boys and Girls Club to the NBA Life on the Now Road, uh, the Lowe's Moore Chronicles, uh, she said my book was like a blueprint. And so that's how I got the blueprint and the blueprint podcast. And, and so when I was looking at some things that I had, had written down, you know, I had the blueprint podcast is about personal and lifestyle development and focuses on lifestyle seven spheres of influence. And, and, and the playbook addresses, we address religion and relationship, family, education, government and law, media, finance, business and finance, sports, arts, and entertainment. And then I also said that the blueprint is geared to all ages with a special focus on teens, young adults, and adults. And, 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 also, a couple of couple of powerful entities I, I thought about when I was doing the blueprint was the power of choice. How 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 awesome is that? How important is it to make proper choices? And then personal growth. You know, I always uh, pride myself on getting better every day. You know, getting getting stronger every day. Working on my physical body, trying to stay in shape. Um, trying to work on my my mind as a muscle and try to work on my spiritual life. So personal growth is important to me. And the other word is thinking, you know, because how you think, right? How you think determines what direction and how successful you will be. And also I said this, I, I, was, I was just looking at these things that I had, I had written down and it said, Lowe's Moore said, before you can change the outside, you have to change what's on the inside. The podcast expresses the power of communication and the importance of making it effective and a practical application. That's, I was like, wow, I said that, I wrote that, I, you know? So that's what the blueprint is all about. And I'm excited to be on another show and I'm excited to make that happen, you know? Uh, and here, you know, tonight I got, well, I found another ball. This is another basketball, my miniature basketball here. And this is my pebble. You know, uh, Denzel Washington said that the that I was like a pebble in a pond and that there was going to be a ripple effect. And I'm excited that tonight's show is going to be a ripple effect. And I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm excited. And remember, we're focusing on... 
uh, you know, how to create or build a wealth mindset. Let me throw that. Let me throw that pebble in the pond right here, right now. So, but before we get started and and we introduce our guests, you know, we got to go through the protocol. Each week, we have what we call is the book of the week. Yeah, book of the week. And man, I've read this book before. This is a win-win book, right? By Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I mean, if you want to understand relationship building, if you want to understand people, man, this is an awesome book, man. To I, I remember when I was part of the Peacekeepers, a, a, a peace corps or peace group, and we used to go out into the community. And this book we had to read in order to go out there and meet the community because there were some tough people out there in the street. And, and Dale Carnegie's book, that's a must read book. It should be in your library. You should have that book in your library. Matter of fact, all the books that I've, I've given you over the over this last year or so, they should, man, you should be able to build a library because there's nothing more important than self-investment. You should invest in yourself. And the way to do that is to make sure that you have the information or the knowledge and, and, and that you should be reading. And, and so this week, word of the week. Yeah, we got the word of the week here is networking. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, this evening uh, with my guests. And networking is a, a very port, important, powerful tool, right? Uh, and that's where relationships are important and networking is important and meeting people, that, meet, meeting people is very important. And so this week's word of the week is networking. Get to know what that word is because it's going. it will be a, a very powerful tool that you will need to have in order to be successful. So this week word is networking. And of course, here is our affirmation or quote of the week. This is from Hill and Pierce Hopper. Hill Hopper, his son Pierce, they started this when they came when they were on the show and I, I just kept it up because I think it's important. It says, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get others to other people interested in you. So it's important that it's important to be about other people rather than be about yourself, right? Uh, it's important to help people. I think it was Zig Ziglar who said, hey, the more you help others, right? The more those things turn around and come back to you. It's very, very, very powerful, powerful to be able to help, to help other people, right? Don't be just about you, but be about people. And I got a few shout outs. I got to get these shout outs in. Um, you know, the first shout out is uh, I want to salute uh, Russell Westbrook, right? And uh, he broke Oscar Robinson's record, uh, you know, this this past week. I mean, I, I don't know what it if you guys realize how important, how powerful it is to do it, have a triple double. Now, triple double, it means that you have either, you know, double figures in points, uh, double figures in assists, double figures in rebound. And that's what Russell Rushbrook did for now going on four straight years. Right. Oscar Robinson was the all time leader, but Oscar Robinson missed a it was like either a point or rebound or assist. He was a point or rebound assist away from average averaging a triple double for his entire career. Right. But now Russell Westbrook has done it. He did it one year. Oscar Robinson did it one complete year where he averaged a triple double. We never thought it would be broken. But Russell Westbrook is averaging a triple double for the last three to four years. And that's an awesome accomplishment. Um, also, while we're on basketball, we're about to enter the playoff. Matter of fact, my guest and I, we were just having a conversation about to get have a conversation about the NBA playoffs. And uh, yeah, we, we want to also salute 
while I'm, while I'm thinking about basketball, we also want to salute the WNBA on 25 years, 25 years of, of, of the WNBA. They, they are celebrating the 25th year. Wow. That's powerful. And they're continuing to grow every single year. And I got a few more shout outs and then we'll jump right into this here. I got another shout out. Uh, Jamal Mashburn. I don't know if you guys remember Jamal Mashburn and Jamal Mashburn. I don't know if you can really see that down there, but Jamal, after he finished playing basketball, became a big time businessman. Right. His earnings, you know, he made a lot of money as a player, but he's making triple <laughs> four times the amount of money uh, that he made as an NBA player because during his process of preparing to leave playing basketball, he started to make investments. He started to make purchases. I don't know if you can see that he owns 38 uh, Outback Steakhouse, 40 Papa John's, three Dunkin' Donuts, two car dealerships, real estate company, I mean, and he's all, he's also interested in thoroughbred horse horse racing industry, and man, that that's just awesome. I, we want to salute, you know, since we're talking about wealth, right? Since we're talking about wealth here, a couple of guys, and here here here's another guy, uh, Junior Bridgman, played at the University of Louisville, played at with the Milwaukee Bucks, and Junior Bridgman. Right, like Jamal Mashburn, uh, back when I was playing, they started having franchises, and 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 Junior uh, started to purchase a few franchises, and and today, I mean, he has well over a hundred of these franchises, restaurants, Chili's, you know, out outbacks, and all those different things. His net worth is about four hundred million dollars a year, <laughs> right? I, so I want to do I want to do a shout out because they didn't they didn't just dribble the ball, right? Like many of our athletes today, they're not just dribbling the ball. Back when I was playing, we was just dribbling the ball. We didn't know what we we didn't know what we were going to do when it was over. But Jamal Mashburn and Junior Bridgman did something after ball, and now you see that many of the athletes today. Right, a businessman. They just not ball players, but they are businessmen also. So let me just rush along here. And I, I just want to give a you know, let you know that next week we have Dave Bennett. Dave Bennett is gonna be um my guest for next week. I usually wait to the end, then I'm rushing. But Dave Bennett, uh, who's a a minister of mission in the marketplace, um you know, I'm looking forward to Dave. We're going to continue to talk about uh, creating and building a mindset of of wealth. And then after him, at the end of the month, one of my good friends, Dean. I got Dean uh, Dean Bowman, the voice of God. He's going to be awesome, man. He's, this is this is going to be. I don't know. It's going to be tricky because he's in Romania, right? He lives in Romania. And he's a gifted singer and he is, has an awesome voice. And I'm looking forward to Dean, man. He, I think it's going to be seven o'clock. We're going to be doing the show seven o'clock here. And I don't know, it's like a 12 or 15 hour difference. And, and he's going to be in Romania and he's going to, he's going to stay. He will wake up and get on the show and we're looking forward to it. And <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about that. But tonight, um, let, let me show you a little highlight here, and then I'm going to introduce my guest, and we're just going to jump right into it. Many of you have inquired about what it means to network wise. So I'm going to share with you what exactly that means. Network wise is a verb and can be defined as number one, to take a proactive approach to relationship development with the ultimate goal of benefiting another individual. Number two, it's to establish value by always welcoming the opportunity to collaborate through conversation. And last but not least, number three, to cultivate a mindset that is immersed in learning the science and art of networking. At the end of the day, it's a habit and a skill that similar to anything else needs to be nurtured or like a muscle, it will atrophy. 
FM Alexander once famously said that people do not necessarily decide their futures, they decide their habits, and their habits decide their futures. So I implore you to network wise one of your habits. I promise that extraordinary things will start appearing in your life just like they have for mine. Now that you have a better understanding of what it means to network wise, get out there and do it. Not only will it improve your life, but also the lives of others. The blueprint, Adam Connors. Adam, how you doing, man? Hey, how are you, my friend? I am good. I am good. So before we get started here, we started to talk about a little, you had a little thought on your mind about the playoffs. You know, I did, but if you don't mind, I'd like to jump in on some of the, the things that you talked about to, to the, the preview of the show. You mind, you mind if I address some of those? Yes. yes. Awesome. So first and foremost, Dale Carnegie's book, big fan, have read it a couple times, highly recommend. Um, yeah, and the quote that you actually used from Hill something or other, I, I, I missed that. That's actually a Dale Carnegie quote. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It yeah. is. So I, okay, I, I assumed you knew that, but just, just <laughs> in case. Um, in terms of the people you talked about, you know, it was really interesting. Um, I, I was fortunate enough in 2011 at the, the W Hotel, I was at a, a private equity um, investment for athletes and entertainers. And uh, was really fortunate to have lunch actually with Sean Marion and Jamal Mashburn. Oh. And, you know, yeah, so so Jamal, you know, you know, he came, I forgot what his net worth was, but it, it, it was, it's, I think it's way more than three times what he actually made as a basketball player. He was really smart. He was really sharp. And uh, he spoke to some of the other fellow, um, you know, athletes and other business uh, men and women that were there. And I got to tell you, it was really inspiring. He's very articulate, and uh, you know, I, I wish I had more time with him. I, I was thoroughly impressed. Um, you you talked about Russell Westbrook, and what most people don't know. So a friend of mine is friends with his business manager, and actually, Russell Westbrook is one of the only people. I think he, I, I want. I think it's like every other week. He sits down with his financial advisor and goes meticulously through all of their investments. What's going on? Their insurance, you know, you know, how are things performing? Like he's intimately involved, you know, more so than than most even business people. So uh, the, the guy's got, you know, he, he's got his head on straight. Now, let's talk about him as an athlete. I mean, this man is on fire and in a zone and uh you know, I'm not necessarily a, a, a you know a Washington fan, but him and Beal, you know, I mean, they they are on fire, and as I'm sure you know, as an athlete, you know, sometimes it's that it's that inertia, and, and you know, you know, you don't want to get in the way of that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ooh. you know, a you could not be hot during the season, and you just can kind of get hot, mm -hmm. come into the playoffs hot, yep. and and. You know, I you know what I was thinking about because you know I like the Warriors, I like Steph Curry and so forth and yeah. so on. I had a thought the other day. I was, you know, just sitting there thinking. Like I said, man, I don't think that Steph Curry and them. I don't know if the Warriors are good enough to 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 win with just Steph himself. But then there's some other tools around them, and I don't know if you remember before they actually won a championship with Steph Curry. Right. You got to go back like 40 some years, I think it is. Right. And they were the most unlikely team to win an NBA championship because really they only had one player that we all can remember. <laughs> Kareem? No. Rick Barry. Oh, Rick Barry. That's right. The shooter. That's right. Yeah. Rick, Rick Barry, they won an NBA championship with Rick Barry and mm -hmm. and and uh and a group of guys we can't even remember. Yeah. So you you just never know what team is going going to get on a streak and and just and just ride that wave. Yeah, you we know? got the we got, got the local Knicks that are on that streak right now. You just never know. You got uh, 
Randall. And you just never know. One guy, one team can get on a roll, and you just never know. Listen, you, you got Coach Thibodeau, who most people don't realize was the assistant coach when the Celtics won those years, most a uh, couple of years back. And a lot of the true basketball guys, you know, yeah, Doc Doc Rivers was the the uh, you know the front man, and he was the head coach. But if you talk to the players, the credit that you know from their perspective goes to Thibodeau. Yeah, well, you know, he was definitely uh, you know Doc was probably orchestrating the offense. Correct. And I, I know that Thibodeau was orchestrating that defense because he's a hard nose. Yeah. yeah. Get in your face kind of uh you know coach and you know what i like about uh thibodeau in this experience with the knicks and i i think it's taking him a moment to learn it right because some i know some coaches that they just get so focused on defense man forget offense we win we win by playing defense i love that thibodeau has made an adjustment and he's allowing them to you know he understands the offense as well so they're not playing defense but they're playing offense as well and and all of the new york fans can can finally you know take their head out the sand yeah and, and say go new york go <laughs> yep. yep 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 jesse Itler, the founder of that statement or that that saying is, is probably uh, loving that too <laughs> So uh before we uh, you know get into the business side of this so 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 that people get to know a little bit about um Adam um talk to me a little bit about the importance of family growing up you know your family now and the importance of family and education Oh my god um you know where do I begin um you know you know when you talk about family are we talking blood what are we talking Man, we're talking about mom and you know mom and dad, siblings, uh, gotcha. ex extended family, and 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 you know current you know currently being a father, mm -hmm. husband, you know all those things. Okay, great. Yeah, so currently, uh, you know, I'm the father of two amazing little ladies. I call them. One is twelve. One is fifteen. I'm married. Uh, I'm going to be celebrating twenty years of marriage in a couple weeks. As a matter of fact, been together for a few. Say that again. I said, I was like, woo, 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 woo. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, depends on what day you catch us in my, you know, but yeah. Um, uh, so married, I, I grew up in uh, a little north of you, northern Westchester uh, in, in the Katona area. Um, uh, parents were, you, you know, to, God, yeah, in South Salem, actually, to be specific. Uh, I got two parents and I've got a younger brother. Okay. Cool. And yeah. what was the other part that you were, were Education. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, uh, I, went to, I went to high school in, in Westchester and then I graduated from Quinnipiac. It was Quinnipiac College at the time. Most people today know it as Quinnipiac University. And uh, most people probably know it either if they're hockey fans because it's usually like a number one ranked hockey team or if they've ever received a call because uh, Quinnipiac does their polling. All the time. I don't know if you've ever gotten a call or, or read their Quinnipiac polls, but that's how most people usually identify with the uh, with the university. Well, I know Quinnipiac because I I was doing some assistant coaching for Marbury High School, and and one of the kids had an opportunity to to go there, and and then oh. my, my daughter, um, and you know I used to do some. There was a uh, WNIT. Yeah. And I, I used to, my wife and I used to go to, when doing the WNIT, we used to be the host. Well, we would go around and be the host or the coordinator of the games. And I was stationed up at Quinnipiac for a game. Wow. And um, I saw that beautiful hockey stadium. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I saw the beautiful hockey stadium. And then um, my, uh, my daughter now is the assistant coach for Fairfield University and, and Quinnipiac is a part of the MAC. Yep. So every year, you know, that's that home and away, uh, you know, game. So I, I'm familiar with Quinnipiac. Yeah. Hey, is, is uh, Bobby Valentine still the head of uh, athletics over at Fairfield? I don't know. He's at, he, he's actually at, he's down the street. 
um, what's what's the, it's another smaller college, Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart, yeah, he's down over there, at Sacred Heart. Okay, yeah. yeah, right around the corner from yeah. Fairfield. Yep. <laughs> I always get those confused. Yes, you know. So, um, yeah, let's get let's get right in. You know, because I always try to let the audience know, you know, how important is this, particularly when we started the pandemic. You know, sometimes we we lose value. You know, we, we lose values, we lose morals, so forth and so on. And and so during the pandemic, man, there was such a tough time where people were losing loved ones, loved ones were sick and so forth and so on. So I want to I always start out with the importance of family because there's a part of family, you know, we no, there's no perfect family. So we, we we have, you know, some dysfunction in family and we have some function in family and and but yet we still love family regardless. They they are families, regardless. And so I wanted people to be aware of, you know, stay close to your family, stay connected to each other. And and family's important. Uh, it's never too late for people to turn their lives around. You know. So so stay connected. And then during the course of the pandemic, we start talking about extended family. I think you were kind of maybe alluding to that family extends. So you, you have something about extended family? Yeah, it's a, not necessarily extended. It's a matter of kind of defining what, what you consider family. I mean, you know, for myself, you know, there's uh, just some of the relationships that I've developed throughout the course of these years that I consider, you know, more, you know, more, more than family. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's not necessarily by blood. I mean, obviously for, for, for my, you know, family, you know, I would do anything, but it's really, you know, just some of the people that I've just been fortunate enough to surround myself with that I consider family. And and to your point, you know, now is never, I mean, it's really just shown itself and magnified the importance of those kinds of relationships. You know, we're, we're seeing, you know, and not, and more importantly, those that don't have those kinds of relationships, you know, you're seeing loneliness going off the scale. I mean, it's just going off the charts. You're seeing right. mass suicides. You're seeing, you know, all of these, you know, the stresses that people that don't have these kinds of relationships so do not, don't have the outlet. So it's really highlighted this. So I, as, as negative as that might seem, I actually think that that's positive because it's brought a lot of light to this situation. And, uh, and I really hope that when the, this, this whole, you know, virus thing kind of goes away, that people don't forget about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, go back to, where very rarely we were calling each other. Um, you know, people get so busy, don't call their mom, they don't call their dad. They, you know, you get busy, don't call your kids. I mean, you know, you got an aunt out there, you know, so, uh, and you got friends out there, you know, yeah. and, and doing this, uh, this COVID experience, uh, you know, I, I, I've been reaching out to like old alumnus from the Boys and Girls Club, where I went to high school, uh, college, uh, you know, old college teammates and stuff like that, just seeing how people are doing, you know? And so this just made a family. And I, I, when I say family, I mean, extended to all yeah. your friends and, you know, all your partners, you know, and even for me, when I was working at the boys and girls club board members, you just want to know how people are doing, you know, and sometimes you never know when people are alone. And I don't know where you just give a call to just see how they're doing. And that's very powerful. And that's why I, I, you know, I brought up the importance of family and the importance of, of education, because that, that, that's important too, you know? But yeah, I mean, that's, that's a whole other, uh, I'll roll to education in a minute, but if I could touch on a little bit on the, the, the family and the relationship and the connections, you know, they say not having, uh, really strong relationships is the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. You know, that's how important it is having those kinds of relationships, having the lows mores in the world that can reach out to you just to say hello. You know, that, you know, what you do for somebody when you're putting that call in or sending that text is so important. And you, you, you might not ever know what, you know, where someone's at and how at the power of that phone call, of that text, of that email. It's it's great. And, uh, you know, I mean, just think about, all, you know, how, how important they are. There, there was a book written by a, a lady uh, named Bronnie Ware, 
and it, uh, she was a palliative nurse. And for those that don't know what, what uh, you know, the palliative care is, that's essentially like right before, before you go to hospice. It's, it's when you're, you're kind of with it somewhat lucid, uh, but you're dying. And she wrote a book on the top five regret of dying. And uh, I think, you know, with, of the top five, like two or three of them were all tied to relationships, family. And again, that's at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, can I can I read something to you from, yeah. uh, from something that I did a couple of years ago? Yeah, go ahead. So I had give me one second. I get this. So so a few years back, I don't know if you can read this, but I, I wrote something. I did a 10 year vision statement. Mm. And the 10 year vision statement was to say, hey, in 10 years, what does my life look like? And, and it, it, you know, it's long, it's framed. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. I'm going to bore you guys. But, <laughs> but what I will do is I'm going to read the, the end of it, if that's okay to you. I got, I've got two paragraphs. You ready yeah. for me to go? Yeah. Okay. So I've gone through this whole thing of saying, hey, this is what my life looks like. This is what I own. Here's where I'm living, blah, blah, blah. And then I say, as a means to pay back, I'm active in my community. My neighborhood knows me and respects me and my family. We've helped raise money for school trips and bettered people's lives around us. In sum, I'm a devoted husband and father. I have a dramatic impact on the lives of those who I am affiliated with. I live each day in thanks for what I've been given and I appreciate all that I've accomplished. I recognize that all of my accomplishments are not mine alone. I have had the tremendous support from friends in, and family in a variety of different capacities, social support, financial support, and, gen and general benevolence, which have all been extreme contributors to my success. I couldn't have made it without them. Not to mention, what good would any of this good fortune be if I had nobody to share it with? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Awesome. So, yeah. Okay. So now yeah. you want to talk, now you want to talk about education. Yeah. Well, just before you, uh, I want to say I say it every time on the show. Um, I always mention my grandfather, and when I was a little kid, and my my grandfather used to say, "Hey, hey, come here, boy, come here," <laughs> and he said, "Come on, I want to give you a nugget," and I was like, "Uh, a nugget," and I'm looking at his hand, thinking like there's a you know there's a nugget in it, but it's you know, it's just his hand. He wanted to say something that was important to me. And I, I've been saying it each week that individuals get on here and they 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 give nuggets. And also, like, I love the commercial back a few years ago with uh, Damon Lillard and and uh, Love, Kevin Love, when they were doing the commercial, I think it's an insurance commercial or something, they were dropping dimes, right? You know, Martin <laughs> In, in Martin Day, you know, in the past it was nuggets. Today, at Martin Day is dropping dimes. Well, you just dropped the dime because everybody, you dropped the nugget. Uh, for those who know what a nugget is, uh, you know, some a tool. You know, and you heard me say earlier that the podcast is about uh, making communication a practical application, right? And and so you just showed a practical application. You thought about something. You thought about what the next 10 years look like. And it said, and you wrote it down. Right. And then you can view it, you know, over and over again. So that, that's a that's a nugget. That's a dime. You should write, you know, what you see yourself, where you are and where you're going and where you would like to be. I would say in the next three to five years, in the next five to ten years, right. uh, Adam is just giving you something, food for thought. You know, uh, do it. Sit down and do it. Don't don't procrastinate. Get it done. <laughs> well, well, you know, listen. It's the same. If you think of any successful CEO, you know, they gotta you gotta know where you're going. You know, otherwise, what's I forgot the quote? Something about a, a you know an utterless ship has no direction. That's so. Right. The same goes for your life. So, so where do you want to be? What do you want to do? If you don't know, how are you going to get there? So that's what companies do. They, hey, I want to be the biggest 
I don't know, I want to own the best franchise, you know, in basketball. Well, how do you do it? Okay, that's number one. You got to set that goal and then you got to back into it. How are you going to do it? Well, you got to have a good team. You got to have good infrastructure. You got to have, you know, you got to be in a good market. I mean, there are all these things that have to go into it, but you got to have the vision. Then you got to break it down into digestible, you know, you know, small goals to get you there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, so and, and, you know, uh, success leaves clues. So I, I didn't invent this. This is something that I learned from other people and uh, and just, you know, just put it to use. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's, um, that's awesome, man. And so, yeah, hit me with some education stuff. Uh, you know, we talk in school of hard, hard knocks. We talk in uh, regular education. What, what are we talking here? <laughs> well, <laughs> just how important it is. I mean, it's, you know. it's, it's every, I mean, it's not everything, but it's a lot. I mean, you know, as Warren Buffett says, I mean, the single best investment that you can make is in yourself. Um, I, I, I think I've heard you say that before. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you've said that before, but it's true. Um, you know, I, I would agree with that. And then I, I would also like to add a caveat. It's when you also invest in your relationships that you will have a better return on that investment. So, you know, the, the, the education comes in so many different forms. You know, it's not just in school. You know, that, that's what, you know, some people learn in school, some don't. And now the world, because it's, you know, for, for good or bad, it's changing at, at, a, at a massive rate. There's something called Moore's Law. Um, have you ever heard of that? I mean, I got a law. You're, it's the opposite. Instead of low and more, it's Moore's law. The, yeah, the Moore's law. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a real thing. And essentially what they're saying is that technology every 18 months is just doubling. So if you start thinking about that next, and then they say by, I think, 24, I forgot the year, but 2041, we're going to hit something called singularity. And that's where artificial intelligence and human beings are on the same page. It's far out there, but the whether that's going to happen or not, it's, at some point it's going to. But whether it's going to happen in 2040 or whatever you're the projecting, the point is things are changing like rapidly. So you've got to stay educated. You've got to stay one step ahead. You've got to, you know, you need to evolve or die. And I hate to be so like real, uh, cur- cur- you know, like really not positive about it. But it's, it just is what it is. So you've got to keep moving. You've got to keep learning. You've got to make yourself better. You've got to talk to people. You've got to just increase your knowledge at all times. And I, I don't want to scare you, but I want to scare you. It, it's important. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it was interesting because today um, on my way home from uh, church, um, I was listening to Bob Proctor. Oh, I love Bob. What, what were you listening? What was he doing? Uh, he was talking about thinking and he was, a you know, a guest on, on the show. And I think Bob is in his late, in his late eighties or something like that. But he, he was the energy in which he, the vibration and frequency and energy in which he was sharing. Right. He didn't, he didn't show any signs that he was thinking about, like, I'm tired and I'm giving up, <laughs> you know, I'm going, he started think. he started saying about where his company is going to be, uh, you know, coming out the pandemic and uh, positioning itself and, and where it's going to be in the next 10 years. I mean, and what he's going to be doing in it. I'm, I was like, you know, that's the kind of mindset that is what you're talking about is that, and what I was saying earlier, right? How important it is in Dr. Miles Monroe. Uh, he he talks about, you know, he was always buying books, you know, more and more books. He said he said every, you should always invest in yourself, right? And you invest in yourself by finding the best books, right? And also not a, investing in yourself not only just in books but in people. Who who are you? Who you talking to? What are you listening to? Right. And so if you're going to create or build a wealth mindset, it's a question of what you're listening to and what you're reading and what you're watching. Yep. You got You just got to keep feeding the brain. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you something really interesting about Bob Proctor. I, I can't I think he's 80, 84. You know, he, he's getting up there. But 
Do you know that he already has the Bellagio booked for his hundredth birthday? Because he's already he's he's envisioned it. He knows it's happening. He's got it booked. He's got a lot to accomplish. He said so. He's he's all set. The Bellagio is hundredth birthday. How about that? Ah, nice. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. and I think that's what we're talking about. We're talking yeah. about like everything starts with our thinking, right? And 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 so everything starts with. Uh, Bob talks a lot about paradigms, programs. You know, what do you program either program for failure or program for success? Right. Yep. You can you can be programmed to just never get past the glass ceiling, never break it. Right. And and um, you know, so let's let's talk about that. Let's jump into that a little bit more and just talk about that mind. And and you know, some of the things you well, first of all, with education, yeah, right. How did how did you come to this niche? of what you what you do yeah. sure so um it's really interesting how that happened um, in a nutshell I gra i'll give you the the, the the reader's digest version i graduate quinnipiac i get a job on wall street um i i quickly i was very fortunate to be able to make it to a trading desk early because everybody that gets on wall street thinks they want to be a trader or an investment banker quickly realize it's not really a, 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 of interest to me uh got recruited to start recruit uh, a division of a recruiting firm recruiting people in wall street so so uh i did that i was fairly successful at doing that then my boss took me to another firm to do the exact same thing for another company built a financial staffing division um, after doing it twice, I figured, well, why don't I do it myself? So uh, I started my own search firm, did that for a bunch of years. And while I was doing that, I simultaneously built a little real estate portfolio. I also started a career coaching business and I also started a resume writing business uh, that I sold. So did all that kind of stuff for a bunch of years. Had a client of mine ended up becoming a good friend. Um, when I told him that I was uh, interested in selling the business, he he told me he was starting a hedge fund. So I started immediately working with him. And then with our fund, what we did is we would lend money to athletes and entertainers. Um, then we got involved in the NFL concussion case. I got involved with an insurance agency that catered to athletes and entertainers. Um, and it just did a bunch of like really um, – you know, interesting businesses. And, mm. and I, I, I was so lucky. And, and or I should say that people used to tell me, oh, you're so lucky you get these great jobs and you're doing these cool things. And I used to say, yeah, you know what? I am lucky because I knew having been a recruiter for all these different types of businesses, you know, that even people with MBAs from Harvard don't get to do some of the opportunities and the experiences that I've had. Um, right. It, you know, you know, this guy from Quinnipiac with an undergrad, you know, having the opportunity to interact with all these people that were significantly smarter than me. But what I did have is I had relationships. I had great relationships. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, it's, it's called networking, you know, not net funding. So I had been spending all these years building some fantastic relationships that put me in a position to do some of these cool things. So back in 2000 and uh, I think it was uh, 17, I had something very bad happen to me. And had it not been for some of these amazing people that were in my life, um, you, you know, I, I could have gone a different route, but they did. People stepped up, they helped out in so many different ways. And it made me really value the relationships that I had built. And then I started thinking about, well, what about, gosh, I, you know, again, am I so lucky you know, what would, you know, if this happened to somebody that didn't have the kinds of relationships, I can see people committing suicide. I can see people committing crimes. I can see a lot of bad things happen when you get put in certain situations. And again, that could have easily been me had I not had these kinds of relationships. And then I started looking around and again, thinking about the conversations that I had about people you know, that are significantly brighter than me, went to, gone to different schools, done more things, but yet not having near the success that I've had. So I saw an opportunity and uh, I started NetworkWise, which is, you know, an, an organization, you know, again, what I, what I do, I mean, you saw that little commercial, those who are watching, but essentially what I do is I help equip individuals as well as organizations 
with that like networking mindset so so they can accelerate outcomes in sales they can accelerate outcomes in career opportunities uh if you want to be an entrepreneur or, or just just your life in general and that's what my organization does it teaches people to understand what networking is what it's not and and how it can benefit you in so many different ways in life and i teach people and i provide them with a roadmap on what they can be doing whether it's to get a job whether it's to start a business or whatever it might be to be able to solidify build and then also nurture those relationships so did i just go on a uh, a soapbox and give you a long soliloquy yeah you did but it was good it was good and, and i think you threw out you know you threw out a number of well, at least one great big nugget. Okay. Relationships. Well, that's that's a, a great big <laughs> nugget. And it, it, we can't underemphasize the word, right? And the meaning and understanding of that, the importance of it, right? Yeah. It's, it's everything. If you, whether you're working for somebody or whether you're owning, relationship building is is one of the major keys and you you also said something else too that i wanted to go back uh jump back to real quick you you talked about when you wrote down uh what you were going to do in the next uh you know 10 years i, I look at that as uh as a plan i mean uh you know one of one of my favorite uh scriptures in the bible says um you know a people or, or organization without a vision will perish yeah write the vision down line upon line precept upon precept and 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 so you what you were talking about is have a plan strategically have a plan and also how important it is to have relationships and so when you're creating a a a a well a mindset building a mind uh a wealthy mindset or creating a a, a wealth mindset i mean those are two <laughs> two real key nuggets there right that that's very important and so yeah you, you need those really i mean listen a, a strong network with relationships are going to help you to fill some of the most interesting unique and challenging situations in life so, uh, I mean, th there's a gentleman by the name of uh, 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 Ron Burt. He's a, he's a very famous, uh, I think he's like a social scientist, but he teaches at the Chicago Booth uh, School of Business. It's arguably the number one MBA program in the world. And he's a leading expert in something called network science, which studies relationships. And, and he came to the outstanding conclusion that the number one predictor of your career success is having large and open networks. Um, there's there's a, a polling institute called Gallup, and according to Gallup, the number one predictor of career success, you'll never guess, relationships. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sorry, what'd you say? No, no, I, I was I was I was emulating you, relationship. <laughs> there it is. You're pulling it up. That's impressive. <laughs> On call. This is, this is good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it yeah. so you have a few things like that. I, I got a few of them. I got some few pictures of you, and uh -huh. and a few of those, a uh, few of those uh -huh. uh, sayings <laughs> there. Yeah, nice. uh, well, quote because you know I'm I believe in 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 uh, the power of quotes. Nice Me hat, too. like the hat, man. Okay. Curtis okay. was on the show. He had a hat like that, man. Ooh, nice. Little I like snare. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah. Because did your due diligence. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, here, here's a couple of uh, I was looking at um, while I was going through. Uh, I had pulled some names because I've seen one of the names up there. You had a quote from Zig Ziglar, who was one of my. Oh, love yeah. Zig. Look at that. On time. Right on right on time. I, I love Zig. Uh, from back in the day, man, I love Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Um, I love Les Brown, yeah. uh, John Maxwell, and and uh, 
One of my favorite quotes uh, is by T.D. Jakes. And T.D. Jakes yeah. is, a, is a pastor out in Dallas. He said, if you're the smartest one in the room, <laughs> get out of the room. <laughs> Get, find the room where you feel stupid and get in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I got I got one for you. What what okay. you know? What, what's the biggest room in the world? The room for self improvement. Ah, yes. The room for self improvement. I'm I'm gonna steal that one. Yeah, I stole it from someone. Go for it. I don't remember who. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, like uh, my good friend Greg White. Uh, he's a motivational speaker. We played basketball against each other. Um, of course, er, you know, back in the day, Earl Nightingale. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, Chris Gardner. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if you've seen that uh, Pursuit of Happiness with Will is that, Smith. Is that Will Smith? Yeah, he, he was did the movie Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, that was a great movie. Yeah, and Chris Gardner is one of the top motivational guys as well as financial guys, you know, around, uh, you know, Ralph Waldo, Walt in, is Emissy M Anderson, right? Ralph Waldo Anderson. Oh, Walter. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, the guy, Joseph Murph Murphy, uh, he did it on, uh, the science of the subconscious mind. Ooh, there's a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, hey, hey, welcome, you know, on the blueprint, we're just talking back and forth. Remember, this is interactive. So if you have any questions, man, uh, you want to pop up on the screen about uh, networking, relationships, uh, wealth, wealth building, uh, you should you should pop a couple of questions up here. Just don't listen. Get interactive. You know, yeah, right? like that. Yeah, I, I'm happy to do that. And if there are people that are listening right now. I'm happy to walk them through a challenge that they're going through in their life and I can show them how their relationships can help them. So, you know, whether it's, I don't know, get, getting a job, you, being in trouble, whatever, you know, looking for a doctor, whatever it might be, everybody, I don't care who you are, you know, we all have some issues, some challenges that that's going on in our lives right now. Or we know somebody that is experiencing some kind of challenge. And, you know, it's nice to be able to kind of walk through how we can leverage our relationships because people want to help. You know, it's, you know we, are, we are good by nature and, and we want to help. And when you know how to kind of build the relationships and then also tap into those relationships for good, everybody wins. One plus one equals three. Yeah, yes. And, and so, yeah, if there's any questions out there, yeah, just pop them on if you're out there. I mean, I know everybody sits around wanting to be rich. Right. And, and it, as I said last week, um, you know, Dr. Miles Monroe talks about the the uh, the seven spheres of wealth. Um, we just happen to be talking about the one, the mindset and resource. We, we already know the importance of spiritual wealth, mental wealth, physical wealth, social wealth, influential wealth, community wealth. I mean, uh, Adam uh, mentioned that earlier about the importance. Am I, am I good for my community? Uh, you know, uh, those things are important. But we, we, you know, and one of the reasons I, I wanted to come and have this conversation about wealth you know, because most of us don't think about wealth. And I had a conversation with a young man who who was a, a professional athlete. And he was telling me he wanted to purchase a number of things. Right. And and I and I said to him, and I think he got upset. And I told him that he was he was rich, but he wasn't wealthy. Mm, yep. Right. And and you know, and I tried to explain that if you were to stop playing now, yep. right, would you survive? Right. And and without ever playing again or ever working again. Right. And and I was explaining to him is wealth is when while you sleep, your money is making money. 
right? And so we don't think about what wealth is, right? And even though we, I think there's a mindset that we don't want to think about it. We, we, we don't, oh man, that's selfish to be thinking about wealth, right? But so many of us have aspirations and dreams, not just for ourselves. We all want to be comfortable, yeah. right? Just for ourselves, but we all dream about if we can solve the issues of poverty, if, if we can feed people, you know, if we can put build a school, you know, we all have these dreams, these, these dreams about helping people, right? But helping people takes resources. It does. Right. And so those who are wealthy, right, can not only are they a blessing to themselves, but they become a blessing to other people as well. And that's the kind of wealth I'm talking about is that I am know I'm good, but I got enough resources that I can help others too as well. And we got to change the mindset. Yeah. What's, what's your thought about? I, I agree with you. I mean, you know, and how I consider, I look at wealth. I, I had a friend by the name of Steve Sims. He wrote a great book called Blue Fishing. I think you'd really like it. He speaks, he speaks your language also, and I can send it to you. But uh, he, he wrote Money is Not Wealth relationships are mm. and um and and uh oh god i forgot who said this but like rich relationships are actually the currency of the wealthy mm. um but uh but yeah i mean listen yeah I, I i agree with with what you're saying it's um and it's like how we got connected right i mean you know my good friend hugo who was on the show a couple of weeks, a weeks ago he was a man Every, every every time every time I you know I'm talking to Hugo he's he, you know every now and then he just bring up man you gotta talk to my man Adam man you know Adam's going you know you gotta talk to him man he's all about relationships you know and stuff <laughs> yeah, like that so you know he hooked me up with you and we had a conversation you know he was on the show now you're on the show and and uh, that's how, like you said relationships are important and I pride myself on having good relationships yep Can, and, and 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 you know what and respecting those relationships good point great point you know can, can i walk you through i try mm -hmm. to tell people that you you never know who you're talking to and and uh like like tim ferris he, he says uh, he famously said that you never know who can put you on the front cover of the new york times and and how you don't just because people don't immediately you don't think that they can immediately benefit them. Don't discount them. So if I can, I, I want to walk you through how you and I connected. If you don't mind, I want to, I'm going to back into this. It's going to take a little bit, but I think it's important for people to understand how you and I came to how today happened. So mm -hmm. I'm going to rewind 15 years ago. I got introduced to somebody who ended up becoming a client of mine. The client referred me to another client. That client ended up becoming uh, my business partner who I referenced before when I said, hey, we started a hedge fund. Mm -hmm. That person ended up introducing me to somebody that got me an opportunity to play basketball in Teaneck. In Teaneck, I got the opportunity to play basketball with Hugo. <laughs> Hugo, Hugo and I ended up making, you know, becoming fast friends. He ended up coming. I have a podcast also. He came on my show. I mean, we've been, I mean, you know, I, I don't know how long ago that was. It was probably five years ago when we first met. And thanks to that relationship that, uh, you know, with Hugo, I am fortunate. Enough, I was fortunate enough to meet you. And here I am today. So had that relate, you know, 15 years ago. And all those different people had all those things not happened, I would not be here today. Right. So I, I can't stress enough the importance of never discounting who you're talking to, may, build, not just building the relationship, but maintaining the relationship. Mm -hmm. And here we are today. Here's a good example. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are listening out there. Uh, you know, some sometimes you, you do shows and, and you know, you know, some 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 interviews have what we can I consider is the entertainment impact. Right. And and sometimes people want to be more entertained than to 
want to literally want to learn. Yeah. And and like I said earlier, the purpose of the blueprint, <clears throat> you know, is about vision, is about dreams. And and I, I tell everybody in order to build a building, you know, build a house, you start with a blueprint. Right. Is, you know, you got to have a blue, you got to write a plan, get a, get the blueprint together. And, you know, because you want to see where you want to put everything at and where everything goes and all the dimensions. Mm -hmm. with that. And 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 uh, I don't know if people want or want to know and understand process, because that's what we what we're talking about here. Yep. And process. And what you said earlier, hey, this is what I'm going to do 10 years from now. I wrote it down and then you said, you know what you said? Because, you know, the, what, one of the most important things for me, and I think when I was a little kid, the thing that caused for me to be successful, when I was a little kid, like nine, 10 years old, my first basketball team, my coach was, was talking to me, uh, talking to the team. And he said, the most valuable thing you could ever do is learn to listen. Ooh. Right. Two ears, one mouth. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and so listening in, in, in the art of communication is the most important thing because if you didn't listen, you don't you haven't gained understanding, and then understanding you can't put it into practice. So you know it's really interesting that you say that. Um listen in silent, it's spelled with the same letters. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Yeah, someone brought that to my attention. Again, yeah. I can't take any I can't take any credit for it. Yeah, probably Hugo. He comes up with these things. <laughs> he probably did. He does, man. He just comes up. I you know, I just want to hear what the word of the day is with that guy. Hey, how's it going? You know, I'm on this side of the earth or whatever. Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He always says to me, man, you can't drive a parked car, man, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think one of the last ones he dropped on me, I'm like, Hey, you know, how you doing today? He goes, you know, some days you're the dog and some days you're the hydro. <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah, man, I love it. Uh, awesome, you know, and 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 so yeah, let's 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 get into this a little bit more in regards to, um, you know, start. How do you start? You know, uh, thinking because I think that it comes down to clearly, uh, you know. <clears throat> learning how to think if you're going to build well it's learning how to think what what it you know and that that's that's a golden question i mean i mean you know i think you touched on this earlier it's just about a mindset you know i mean you need to have that proper mindset and you know you you, you quoted zig ziglar before i'm going to throw another one at you another zig quote he says your attitude not your aptitude is going to determine your altitude so you, you know, it, 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 it all starts here, you know, and, and, and if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So <laughs> that, 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 that mindset, it's a muscle and it needs to be trained. And if you don't train it and if you're not using it like a muscle, it's going to atrophy. Right. So mm -hmm. and, and again, it is everything again, getting back to the mindset and perspective. Uh, um Albert Einstein had a really good quote. He said that, uh, you know, if you, if you don't think, I forgot how he said it, so, something about the importance of a mindset and, and how and perspective. And he said, just just put it this way. He goes, you know, an hour sitting with a pretty girl on a park bench can pass like a minute. But a minute sitting on a stove, a hot stove can sound, you know, can feel like an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. You yeah. know, That's so good. So, so you got to have that mindset. You got to have, and, and, and it, it's got to be, um, you know, the mind, and the mind is like a parachute, you know, it, it functions best when it's open. Mm. So, you know, keep, keep that mind open, keep that, you know, keep the mind open, but stay focused on the, you know, focused on the goal and, and, and create those habits. You know, you posted that, that, uh, uh, you know, one of the quotes that, that I had about, you know, that people, you know, you don't decide your future, you, you know, your, your futures are decided by your habits. So mm -hmm. again, having the right mindset, creating some of those habits, practicing them so they don't atrophy, you know, discipline is going to take you where motivation can't. 
Mm. Yeah, and, and um, that's why I kept the when I don't know if you know Hill Harper. You know Hill Harper? I, I don't. Uh, you know of no. him? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, Hill comes on. He's one of those bright guys, man. You know, Harvard graduate, you know, and Hill, Hill is just, uh, just, just an important, you know, just powerful. And his son was young guy. I don't know, his son maybe four or five years old. And he was always already giving them affirmations. Really? Yeah. And, and he knew all of them. I mean, he yeah. knew all, whatever 20 or 25 of them that they were going over and he was just quoting them. He just pop up on the show and he just started quoting uh, affirmations. <laughs> well, look, wow. And those and those things are important. We we just don't know how important they they are. And and you know one of my favorite uh, sayings is, you know, faith and fear both attract. You know? Yeah. And you know, fear attracts the negative, and faith attracts the positive. Yep. Yeah. So if you're gonna build wealth, if you think you said it earlier, right? If you think you can, you can. You know, and you know so. If you think you won't, you won't. And and if your mind is set in fear, and 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 uh, Bob Proctor was talking about this earlier about the difference between of fear, right? And and you know, it, it's important not to get over into that mindset of fear and poverty and all those that mindset, right? But to get your mind thinking on 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 those things of, that are prosperous. Yeah. You know, you, do you know what the, the acronym FEAR stands for? Give it to me. False expectations appearing real. Yeah, false expectations appearing real. So yeah. There's another one that I, I can't remember the name of it. False. Uh, I can look it up, but but yeah, false expectations appearing real. So, so just take uh, it out. Let's, let's do a little uh, thing. We, I think we mentioned it earlier as we uh, come to a uh you know towards the end of the show we were talking about earlier um you know I'm, I'm i'm trying to gain a mindset of you know all my life i've always worked for somebody right and 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 of course that's a paradigm you know it's a program uh when we go to school we graduate high school we graduate college and we always said we we're going to work for somebody we're gonna we're gonna go to work, you know. We're looking for a job, uh, you know. We're trying to find a career, and it's always we're always dependent on somebody else. How do you change your mindset, you know, for those who are out 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 here now, uh, in regards to at least looking at what it would actually take to be an entrepreneur uh, and and to build wealth. So, man, that that's Pandora's box, and we probably we probably should have started with that. But uh, you know, so so there's a lot there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, you know, first and foremost, you got to think about. You know, are you talking about like starting a business, or you're just talking about anything in general? So that'll help me to talking about starting a business. This this so, right there. Yeah, so starting, I mean, if you have a good idea, that's one thing. But if you just want to kind of start a business, that's a whole other thing. Because a lot of people think, hey, I just don't want to work for the man anymore. But I can tell you, you got to think about all the things that go into having a business. There's so many things that go into the business. There, there, there are there, there's so many risks that, that are, are involved. You know, the highs, the lows, and, and you know, are, are those things that you're ready for, those things that you're willing to take, you know, can you stomach that? Like, there's so many things that you've got to think about. And I don't want to scare anybody about it, but there is just legitimate things that you need to think about. So I can even tell you myself, and I'm sorry to make this about me. I'll, I'll, I'll pull this back. But I've started a bunch of businesses, and I've, I've been uh, a very fortunate in a number of them, but I have not been also. And I can even tell you in this latest iteration of a business, it really hit me that I'm not a CEO. Uh, I am a founder and I am a creator, but I really need a yin to my yang. And that's something to, you know, that, that I, I wish that I kind of came to that conclusion earlier because it's cost me a lot of money and a lot of time and it's cost me a lot of sleep 
and it's cost me a lot of other things to figure that out three or four years later. So those are things that's really important to think about prior to getting into the mindset because it would be a shame to think, hey, I'm going to start this company and and then you lose faith in not being able to do that or not to be able to accomplish what it is that you were looking to accomplish. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but those are the things you got to think about first. So, so let's assume that you've got an idea. You know, you've got this idea, you, you know it's going to work. Then you got to think about getting back to the blueprint. You got to blueprint it out. How is it going to work? And you've got to think about, again, the bigger picture goal of what it looks like. What is it that you're serving? What's the value that you are giving? And how are you going to get that out to market? How are you then going to charge for those services? Who are you going to get to help you put this thing together? Because there's so much that gets involved when you're starting a business. Everything from even just the basics of setting up your company. You know, do you have an accountant that's going to give you the right advice to set it up as an LLC, uh, 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 S Corp? You know, or is it, you know, you don't, you know, again, what state are you going to put it in? You know, then there's, do you have a web, do you have a web person? Do you have, there's some basic things that you need to pull together. Um, do you have, is someone going to help you on the administrative side? Are you going to get a partner? Are you, are you with me still, Lowe's, or am I just kind of going again on another tangent? <laughs> I'm with you. I'm, and, you know, I'm, you know, for all those out there who are listening, uh, you know, it's good, it's good information. It's good knowledge. Uh, to have yeah. you know yeah. and then it, you got to think about you know who are you, who's your target market do you know precisely who is going to pay for the services that you are interested in providing you know and then you know maybe you might when you start going through all this it's overwhelming how are you going to afford it how are you going to live how are you going to are you going to raise money and then what you might think is a really good idea most people aren't so do you have it in you? Even myself, I've raised money multiple times and it's inevitably it takes much longer than you think. And then there's sometimes where you're just not going to get the money. It's, it just doesn't, you know, you've got to, you know, because then you, you've got to put, you got to be able to create a pitch deck. And do you know how to do that? Do you, or do, if you don't, do you have the resources or do you have the connections to get help to do that and to get it done right? And there's a lot, you know, do you have the technology? Again, lots of things to think about. And then you might come, you might come to the conclusion like, wow, that's overwhelming. Maybe I don't want to be a business owner, but maybe I want to be a partner. So that's where maybe you think about, okay, well, who do you know in your networks or what are some industries that you're interested in? And then reaching out to some of these people and saying, hey, I like your business or I like your business plan. Here's something that I bring to the table that I think is worth being some form of partnership. I don't know. Maybe you get sweat equity if they've already got something farther down the road. Or maybe there is. Maybe you do have some money that you can invest to make yourself a partner. Am I going on another tangent here? Or are you following me? Yeah, I'm following you. Yeah, definitely. No, no. It's just, again, it's good. It's good information for those out there who are, um, you know, interested in starting businesses. Yeah. And, and I don't want to dissuade people from starting a business, but there's just such a, a, a low success rate. And a lot of times, a lot of these things can be solved for. So, you know, like that, that you know, now side hustles are big, you know, so that's a nice way to test ideas, test hypothesis, you know, do things like that before kind of going full in. So I, I, I like that idea. Well, yeah. And also, um, I, I joined in a, a, a group here. Uh, with I was talking to one of my friends that works for the county of Westchester, mm -hmm. and, and and they they have what they call Westchester Launch One Thousand New Businesses. I've heard and, of that. Yeah, and so I'm in the second phase uh, of I think it's like seven, eight, nine phases before you start spending money and you know doing all these <laughs> different things. That's um, great. Yeah, so you 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 say what it is that you are trying to accomplish, and then in the second phase, you forget about that, and you go out and try to help others uh, build their business or find out what the pain and problem or opportunity is. It's a good idea. <laughs> you know, so I'm trying to get through phase two uh, of of the pride of of this process, and to so I can get into. Uh, you know, phase three, and I'm sure it's going to go down to the different phases 
it's going to go down until you finally come up with a a product you're worth either uh you know spending your time and resource on so that program sounds fantastic and now what i would recommend to you or anyone else going through that program you're obviously getting access to some pretty interesting people you're getting access to advisors you're getting access to other entrepreneurs also correct yes mm -hmm. as well as other people that are going through the same program too or is it more mono a mono? uh everybody's on a whole network of people who are coming up with new launches and you know twice a week we're we're in a uh, workshops from you know about what's going on and and then on on the wednesday you're having a workshop with somebody who's started a business in a business uh and what that process was uh, when they were going through yeah so okay that's great so what i would do go i, I mean first of all if you can get an opportunity to go into one of these programs highly recommend and then while i'm going through that program i'm learning to i'm connecting with the other people and I'm, I'm talking not just during the set time that you're supposed to talk but i'm going to learn to get to know those people on a different level and what i'm going to do then is i'm going to do whatever i can to contribute to them i'm going to try to do anything that i can to make myself valuable and to try to help them and to show them first that that's how i operate because you might go again, go through this program and realize, ah, you know what? My idea wasn't that good, but you know what? She had a good idea. And then maybe you've built some relationship with her and said, listen, I, I think your idea is good. Here's what I bring to the table. Are you interested in having somebody as a partner or somebody who can help you in, a, in an early stage? Um, mm -hmm. You know, or your idea might be fantastic. And you might, if you had spent the time to meet with some of these other entrepreneurs or people that are thinking about it, you'll be able to recruit them over to you. As I'm sure you know, as an athlete, you've done a lot of recruiting in your day. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, try yeah. to get them to come and play with you. Yeah, correct. So same concept. Now you're just playing in a business setting. You know, same concept. You know, you're looking for the same thing. You know, you'd be surprised at, uh, you know, uh, how someone's game you know how it shows up in the in the boardroom you know you learn a lot about them are, are they an assist person or do they need the ball all the time you know are they going to be the ones that set the screens for you you know or whatever whatever that might be but the same goes for you know in 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 business too yeah definitely without a doubt so as we come down to a close i got a couple of questions for you go for it um let's see here real quick who who is the person that most impacted you outside of a family member so i don't have one but i, I don't have one person per se I, I i take something from everybody you know and, and it's funny you know you mentioned so many of those people that I've taken stuff from. I mean, we're talking everybody I take from, you know, whether it's Tony Robbins in the world that he preaches about continuous self-improvement or Napoleon Hill and, you know, all the principles that, that he talks about as well as like the Bob Proctor on mindset, you know, Joe Rogan on, you know, just the way that he conducts a conversation with a podcast, Wim Hof or David Goggins on just mental toughness, and all the things that you can do outside of what your mind thinks that you can do you know then then there are all these people that i've just been fortunate enough to meet in my life you know learning their habits their discipline uh things that they do just in the daily life are they, they've all contributed I, I you know I, I aggregate all of their personalities and their experiences and i try to glean from them so you know i'm sorry that um there's not one person per se that I can single out. I just feel very fortunate. I feel like it would be criminal if I gave one name when there are just so many other people that have had some kind of impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear you. No, no, no problem. And you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, so before we get off, I, you got a few more minutes here, about 10 more minutes. Uh, you have something that you would say uh, to a young person or young people out here uh, in regards to, you know, building this wealth mindset 
um, or just anything impactful uh, in regard to relationship or networking? Yeah. Um, high level, play the long game. You know, most people don't. They, they fail to, to plant the acorns, which grow into the massive oak trees. Play the long game. Again, you and I, we're here from a, thanks to a relationship from 15 years ago. Um, and every, by the way, every single one of those people that I've mentioned, I'm still in some form of contact with. Um, you, you know, someone, someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I think that's important to, to really think about. So, so number one is to play the long game. You know, <clears throat> number two, get a mentor, uh, a, a minimum of one. I, I believe in something called a personal board of mentors. Uh, that's something that I'm very fortunate to have. I've got, I actually have a couple of different groups of mentors. And when you have a mentor, um, you, you're 70 you're seventy percent more likely to get a promotion at work if you have a mentor at work. Um, people with mentors are five times more likely to receive. Um, uh, I think it's promotions. They're the ones that receive that that make more money. They're the ones that are happier. So, um, you know, you you it's it, it's just so important. And and I and I think you talked about this either earlier in our conversation or at least it was on one of your other shows that that i was watching and and it's something that's pretty common that you know you're, you you become the average of the five people that you hang out with the most you know i'm talking about their attitude their their health their wealth um um just ever everything so let's go back to a basketball analogy and think about those five people and and think of them as as your basketball team and and why don't you surround yourself with all-stars you know if you've got five all-stars on your team you're going to win the game of life so I, I i mean you know you know you know look at your circle and and if you're inspired or if you're not inspired i should say you're in the wrong circle so you know i i really it's, it's you know surround yourself with great people select a personal board of mentors people that are you know formal mentors people that you're going to that you're setting up some form of regular cadence of conversation that 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 it's it's formal like hey you are my mentor i want to learn from you and, and you'll re you know you'll reciprocate and and then also just surround yourself with great people you you will not go wrong um you, you just you just can't you just won't um there there was um you know who General uh, uh, Stanley McChrystal is? He's a he's a four star general. I think that's the highest you can be. And uh, he was on Tim Ferriss show, and and he was asked, um, you know, what do you do? Uh, it's a very very similar question. And, and he says you got to surround yourself with uh, there. There should be three kinds of people that you know: uh, someone that you truly admire, um, that's that's senior to you that you want to emulate, that made it the hard way. Uh, you want to you want to surround yourself with a peer who is better than you. And you also want to surround yourself with someone, oh, I gotta remember how he said this, uh, um, someone below you uh, that's doing a job you did before, but better than you. Mm. Wow. I, think that, I think that's pretty powerful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I hope you are listening out there. <laughs> that, that was good. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Uh, as we uh, come to this close, let's let's talk a little bit of basketball. Woo! Now we're talking. Yeah. So you were mentioning earlier when we were uh, just about to come on the show, you started. Uh, am, you asked me, "Am I watching the, the all these things that are happening with the play-in?" What What was your thoughts? In terms of, do I like playing, or what do you what do you, you know, mean? You were asking me, uh, "Am I watching?" You know, like definitely, I'm watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you have the NBA channel so you're able to catch all the games? I do. I do. Uh, I, I I don't because I know I'll watch every one of those games. <laughs> so so it's a benefit not to have it. 
No, it, it really is. I wish I could. I, I you know, I, I would just sit all day and just watch it, you know? So, well, it's, what, uh, what, you know, remember I talked about that discipline. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're going to take the time out to spend time with your family and get your recreation on and, and do your work. So, your, your uh, icing on the cake is you get to watch ball. Yeah, that's it. That's it. The, the, the playoffs are single handedly my favorite time of year. Wow. So, who you yeah. have? I don't have anyone. I can't. I, I think that this is the first year that I can remember that it is just a toss up. Uh, do you, you know, who do, who do you think's taking it? You've got a favorite? I mean, I know you're partial to Golden, but. Yeah, I'm partial to Golden. Um, you know what? I, I, I haven't found, like, last year, I just kind of really knew that the Lakers and, and, and the team, the, the chemistry that they had seemed to be the dominant team. I, I can't really see. Everybody want to say Brooklyn. No. And, and uh, you know, they have all the potential. They have all the talent. They have everything. Um, you know, they haven't really played long enough together. And the NBA is a different animal. The NBA playoffs is a different animal. It's a different monster. And so when you get there and now you're playing a seven-game series, uh, adjustments, 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 and I don't, I don't know that, uh, I don't know that they are tough enough. The Nets are tough enough when it comes down to the physicality and what they're going to experience night in and night out. Well, yeah. what about uh, you know, just wait for them to lose a game or two and then they start fighting. That's what I'm. That's where I think they're going to go down. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't know that they will because. I would say that if they were younger. That's true. That's a good point. If they were younger, they, I probably would say that. But they're a little bit more mature now. And, yeah, and they're working with veterans. Yeah, they got They have a lot of veterans, and, and they have a lot of experience. So, yeah, and they and if they're healthy, that's the, that's the big <clears throat> key. You know, same thing with the Lakers. If they're healthy, um, you know, nobody's proven yet, like, your Milwaukee's, uh, your Clippers, that they can be, or Utah or the Nuggets, uh, whether or not they could actually do it. I mean, I thought the Nuggets last year were close. They were, they were to, you know, making something happen. I don't know if the trade was good for them or not, you know, when they made the – For the guy from the Bulls? Well, they, they – uh, for the Nuggets, they they traded um, the other guard that they were that they had alongside of Murray. Oh, oh yeah, and, and then, but he comes back. Got Gordon, and they they got Gordon. I don't know if he's, you know, again it comes down to injuries too. Murray got hurt. I mean, he'll be back. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't see a clear cut. I, I think potentially Brooklyn has. All the tools. Yeah. Um, and then, the you know, you can never, never, you can never count LeBron James out. You can't get, you can't get against him. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know. I'm like you. I don't know. It's, I'm going to toss it up in the air, you know. And, and you don't think the Suns are Utah, right? I think they have the, all the potential, too. And, and with Chris Paul – he, he's the deciding factor in regards to his mentality. And yeah. if he can take them along with them, you know, it's like Michael Jordan used to take them along with him. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so it's a possibility, you know. Would I like to see somebody different? Uh, yeah, possibly. You know, I think all of them, that's what I say, it's so, you just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's right. I, oh God, I love it. I'm, I just can't wait for it to start. And the playing. You know, it's I'm okay with it. Change it up, see what how it works. If it doesn't work out, people are upset. Then okay, you know, go back. But I, I, everybody was playing harder. I know that much. Everybody's like, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. That's why I'm like, you know, let's give it a shot. Let's try it. You know, you got to mix it up. You know, again, getting back, you got to evolve or die. Try things out. You know, the you know, keep it going, keep it moving. Yeah. 
Well, Adam, I think our time is up, man. I want I want to thank you, man, for for taking time out your busy schedule, man. Apologize to your family for me taking you away on this Sunday <laughs> evening. <laughs> well, they're probably happy that you took yeah. me. Thanks again, man. I appreciate you, man, and, and and enjoy the rest of the week. And for all those who support the blueprint, I thank you. And I want to say, man, be blessed tonight. Have a blessed weekend, man, and 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 enjoy it, man. Wake up tomorrow and just enjoy life, man. Enjoy your family, man, and, and just have a good time, man, in this lifetime. So, again, I look forward to next week with my uh, – I just met this gentleman uh, and we feel like we've known each other for a while. Uh, David ben Bennett is coming on about the mission in the marketplace, man. He's in uh, from Bank of America and we're going to talk about building or creating a wealth mindset. God bless you and have a good evening. Thank you very much. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L O W E S M O O R E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's Moore and on Facebook at Lowe's Moore Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. With the kitchen is a joke, I ain't buying it like I'm broke.